If you're a PC gamer, then you deserve to know about this. I know you've heard of the popular name brand pre-builds like Dell, HP, and Corsair, but there's a somewhat newer brand in town that you'll definitely want to be aware of. And we're going to be sharing with you everything that you need to know in this honest and unbiased review of the Skytech Prism 2. <laughs> You may be coming to this video after watching my more fun and entertaining unboxing of this machine, but this one is the serious one that'll actually help you determine if you should buy this computer. Whether you're using it for gaming or resource hungry creative applications or just overall productivity, we push this machine to its max to show you what it's really capable of. We max this machine out with the all new Intel i9-12900K processor, an Nvidia GeForce RTX 3090 GPU, and 32 gigabytes of 4800 megahertz of DDR5 RAM. Yes, these super specs make this computer pretty expensive, so please don't go purchase this machine until you've watched this entire video. I'll be giving you my take on the design and build quality, internal and external thermals, fan noise, performance and gaming benchmarks, overall ease of use, and my overall top pros and cons. I'm also going to be showing you a less expensive configuration that I recommend if this configuration is understandably outside of your budget. And if you still have any questions after watching this entire video, just shoot me a comment and if you're publicly subscribed I guarantee a personal response so before I jump deep into the performance let me talk about one of my favorite parts about this computer and that's the design this computer is gorgeous RGB madness it's got RGB on the CPU cooler the RAM and every one of its nine 120 millimeter fans all customizable for your own needs with different animations with the remote or with the software which we'll show you here in a sec a tall glass panel on the front and a massive unobstructed glass panel on the side provide an excellent bragging rights display of the internals. Nothing too special about the keyboard or mouse though. The keyboard with its synced RGB looked decent, but nowhere near as stunning as the machine itself. The actual feel of the keys was just like any other inexpensive membrane keyboard, but the space bar was just a little subpar in my opinion. Just overly loud and felt a little too loose. The mouse was comfortable and the clicks felt pretty good, but the matte black material on the top gets really grungy looking pretty quick from the oil and sweat on your hands. I honestly like the look and feel of my Alienware keyboard and mouse quite a bit more. Apart from aesthetic design, functional design was great as well. All the components were laid out with plenty of room between each other for easy access and most importantly, better airflow. And speaking of airflow, Skytech made a great choice including this 360 millimeter all-in-one CPU cooler for this machine. In contrast, the Alienware Aurora R13 CPU cooler is a third of this size at only 120 millimeters. Just looking at these internals, you already get the feeling that this machine is going to be pretty efficient with cooling. For those of you new to this, this circle piece right here is the pump, which uses a special liquid to transfer heat from the CPU up through these tubes into a large 360 millimeter radiator that's then spread out and then transferred out through the case using these three large fans. Removing the panel on the other side, you can see the back of the radiator. And then underneath this metal bracket right here, we've got plenty of room for expandable storage. And and then next to that, access to the back of the CPU. And at the bottom, your massive, very future-proof 1000 watt 80 plus gold power supply. This is a big deal because the next generation of GPUs is gonna need large power supplies like this. Although this machine has made it easy to upgrade later since they've stuck with a modular PSU. Unlike the well-known Alienware Aurora R13, which uses a proprietary one. For the other components back on the main side of the motherboard, we've got two sticks of DDR5 XPG RGB RAM with speeds of 4800 megahertz, but you can push those even further within the BIOS, and we'll show you that here in a sec. Our Spatium M470 one terabyte 4x4 SSD with a slot for an additional one directly under the GPU. And of course, we can't forget the most important, most expensive part of this machine, our Zoda Gaming NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 GPU with 24 gigabytes of video RAM. And removing it, you can see and feel that it's built pretty well. And behind that GPU is our remote movable and upgradable Wi-Fi card. Now for the ports. Man, they really did not even try to inform the customer very well here. Most computers come with a piece of paper that nicely labels all of the ports for you. Neither the Best Buy listing or the listing on the actual Skytech website gave you information on what version of ports these were. And for some reason, the Best Buy listing had way, way more information than the listing on the actual Skytech website. Skytech really needs to revamp their website. You can see right now, it just feels very unprofessional with the least amount of info that I've ever seen on a website.
website for technology that costs this much. So to figure out what all the ports were, I actually had to look up the motherboard and go to their site to actually see how fast these USB ports were. So on the back side of the top, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and a PS2 port for older keyboards and mice. And beneath that, an HDMI port, two USB 2.0 ports, a BIOS flashback button, and then a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, both capable of 10 gigabits per second. And then two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and an RJ45 Ethernet jack, your two antennas for Wi-Fi, and then underneath that, your microphone, line in and line out HD audio ports. And then lastly, on the graphics card, you've got one HDMI 2.1 port and three display ports for up to four screens total. And then on the front, we've got a power button, a reset button, a DRGB color button to change the LED colors, a DRGB mode button to change the animation modes, a headphone and microphone combo jack, one USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port, and then at the bottom, two USB-A 3.1 Gen 2 ports. Now for the fan noise. Yes, you would expect nine fans to sound pretty loud, and it actually was a little louder than I prefer on the lowest fan setting at 44 decibels. And in the middle performance mode, it was closer to 48 decibels. But only 51 decibels at the highest full speed fan mode. You can see here that compared to the competition, it's the loudest when in quiet mode, but quieter than the rest when in full speed mode, surprisingly. And I honestly found no performance gains going from performance to full speed mode because temperatures were already well below throttling limits. You can see in our thermal imaging tests that we've got some pretty hot areas in the back where the radiator for the CPU is. That area gets up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit under heavy use. This is understandable though, and it just shows that it's doing what it's supposed to. A lot of heat is escaping here to protect the CPU and keep it from thermal throttling. The second hottest area is right here at the top where the majority of the heat from the rest of the components escapes. That's only just a little over 100 degrees though. And then pretty similar temps down here right where that powerful 3090 GPU is. I also did some pretty extensive tests in gaming as well. You can see here that testing nine different games that it was pretty much neck and neck with the HP Omen 45L with the Alienware Aurora R13 being by far are the hottest. And then similar results when switching to 4K resolutions on all of these games as well. The Corsair was an i7 processor, so that one I expected to have the lowest temps. But when it came to the GPU temperatures at 1080p, there was very little deviation across all of the 12th gen pre-builds that I tested, with most of them sitting in the lower to mid 70 degrees. And then surprisingly, not that much changed when switching the resolution to 4K on these GPU tests. I understand that that's a lot of data, so to condense it and make it easier to read, here are the average temperatures for each PC across the CPU and GPU for both resolutions. Obviously the Corsair with the i7 processor had the lowest, but this Skytech machine came in second place for the coolest overall average temperatures. So now the most important part of this review, performance and gaming benchmarks. For Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1947 and a multi-core score of 18,245. A new record for my highest score ever for a pre-built PC. For Cinebench R23, which simulates its 3D rendering power, we got a multi-core score of 26,085 and a single core score of 1965. Again, beating out all of the rest. And as you can see here, our V-Ray benchmark scores were pretty high as well. For 3D Mark, we got an overall score of 19,140, a graphic score of 19,184, and a CPU score of 18,897. For PC Mark 10, we got 7,700. 24. And for those of you who are going to be crypto mining with this computer when you aren't using it, this was by far the fastest pre-built that I've ever tested with mining at nearly 124 mega hash per second. And for that main hard drive, that SSD that everything is stored on, I got speeds of five gigabits per second read and 4.2 gigabytes write, which is fast, but I expected just a little bit more out of a desktop PC. As the 12th gen laptops that I've tested get about six gigabits per second read. Gaming benchmarks were 
were pretty interesting as well. These were our average FPS results that we got for several games at their highest preset settings in HD. You can see that the Skytech Prism 2 had more games with the highest FPS than any other 12th gen pre-built that I've tested. It competed pretty well at 1440p as well with the HP Omen 45L catching up a little bit and doing nearly just as good. But when pushing this machine even harder at 4K resolutions, the HP Omen 45L actually stepped into first place. And here's another condensed graph showing the average frames per second across all nine games on all four machines at different resolutions. It's actually pretty crazy that that HP machine did the best in 4K considering it's about $800 less expensive than those other 12th gen pre-builds that we tested. And here's a few Puget benchmark tests for all the creatives out there. For Adobe Premiere, we got 1108, Adobe Photoshop 1362, and DaVinci Resolve 1720. Just barely above the rest for all creative software except for Photoshop. Every game that I tested with my Oculus Quest 2 headset connected to the computer looked fantastic and was very smooth. And our VR Mark benchmark score showed this to be the case as well, with a very high score of 18,452. Wow. Yeah, that is super smooth. Yeah, I'd say that this is definitely VR ready. Now for the software, you've also got some real-time info like CPU clock speed, GPU core voltage, and hotspot temperature. Pretty frustrating that it doesn't recognize the fans though. All of the fan profiles and adjustments unfortunately had to be done within the BIOS. The BIOS did have a bunch of other settings as well if you wanted to fine tune the computer just a little more. I didn't go too deep into the overclocking, but I did switch it from stable to overclock at one point and I didn't notice too much of a difference. I did take advantage of the XMP profile on the RAM though, which boosts my speed up to 5200 megahertz from the 4800 megahertz that it started with. I'd be careful pushing it past that though. Price wise, this machine starts at around $2,600 for the lowest tier 12th gen model with an i5 and a 3080 GPU. But to better compare it to all the other 12th gen pre-builds we've tested this year, the maxed out model that we got costs $4,150 directly from Skytech, but I got mine through Best Buy for $50 more because I noticed that I would get it in seven days versus nine to 17 days if I got it directly from Skytech. And with my rewards card, I got 5% back anyway, so it actually costs less than buying directly from Skytech. And for further peace of mind, you can get the Geek Squad protection from them as well. No available support products directly from Skytech, surprisingly. And comparing it to my favorite pre-built so far this year, the Corsair Vengeance i7-300 with the same specs, it's a few hundred dollars less. Then comparing it to the first 12th gen pre-built I reviewed this year, the Alienware Aurora R3, 13, it's about the same price, with that one currently sitting at just under $4,000. And that HP Omen 45L, that one is surprisingly about $800 less than all the other similar spec pre-builds. It is stuck with the older and slower DDR4 memory though, and no PCIe 5.0, which is most likely what the next generation of GPUs is gonna need. So not as future-proof as the Corsair and Skytech, but it did have the most games with the highest FPS when it came to 4K, as you saw in our tests. Now, if you're on a budget, my personal favorite is still the Corsair Vengeance machine that I tested with a 3080 GPU and an i7 processor. As you saw in the benchmarks, it was very close to the other pre-builds that had i9 processors with 3090 GPUs. Because that version did so well, I have a feeling that that machine with an i9 processor and a 3090 GPU would dominate against all of these. I just haven't personally tried that one out yet. Honestly, even this 3070 Ti version for 2600 will make most gamers happy. So my overall top reasons you should not buy this computer. Number one is the software. Yes, you can jump into the BIOS to adjust how your fans handle temps and when they need to increase their RPMs, but most other pre-builds have their own software that allow you to fine tune this in a much more user-friendly way. I also found that the software was a little glitchy when it came to controlling the RGB, and even when I downloaded third-party software, those programs had trouble with it as well. And number two is the price. This computer computer at $4,200 is outside of the budgets of most people, unfortunately. A little more expensive than I'd say it's worth. And my number three con was the fan noise. It had the loudest fans than any other pre-built that I've tested when in quiet mode. It's not a huge deal for me, but some people do have an issue with that. Most people honestly aren't going to be using a computer like this in idle mode or doing very little small tasks with it. They're going to be using it as a performance machine. And surprisingly, when the fans were at full speed mode, it was quieter than all the other pre-builds I've tested. 
So my overall top reasons to get this computer. Number one is the thermals. I was pretty pleased with the temperatures on this computer compared to the others. The lowest of the 12th gen i9 pre-builds that I've seen so far. And then number two is the design. Not only does this computer look awesome aesthetically, but it was also built really well. Plenty of fans, an excellent all-in-one CPU cooler, and modular parts that can be easily upgradable. Unlike other pre-built PCs that trap you in their ecosystem with proprietary parts, this computer is built to last a very long time. And then number three is performance. If you're a creative professional, this computer has been the best performer when it came to creative apps and rendering. And at HD and 1440p, it had the best FPS in gaming as well. So overall, yes, this was technically the fastest 12th gen pre-built that I've tested so far. But if you're into 4K gaming or plan to be in the future, the HP Omen 45L after testing nine games had the highest average FPS in gaming. And that one being $800 less than this computer, computer makes this one feel just a little bit overpriced. If you've got the extra money though, then yes, this is a great gaming PC. If you do decide to purchase this machine or one of the others that I compared it to, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the description and comments below, as I get a small commission from those sales at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's a major part in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. I'd also like to personally thank my members for their monthly contributions to this channel, and if you'd like your your name here in all of my videos as well as other perks then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button below and remember every week i do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description so make sure to like comment and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming pcs and the winner for this week is tammy king Thanks for watching guys, I love you guys, God bless.